Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. One of my favorite things about watching sci-fi is seeing how technology is portrayed in the future. I especially hope to see more augmented reality in sci-fi in the coming years because I think AR will be a huge part of the future. I vividly remember the first time I watched Terminator 2. It was so cool seeing the Terminator analyze and identify the world around him. Now, I don't think we'll be able to instantly analyze objects like that anytime soon, but AR has the potential to be amazing by 2030. Before we get started, let's quickly cover the distinction between AR, VR, and mixed reality, or MR. Virtual reality is simply an experience that immerses you in another world. Augmented reality is an experience where you can see the real world, but there are also computer-generated visuals seen as an overlay. And then mixed reality is an experience similar to AR. There are computer-generated visuals. Uh, a key aspect is that they are anchored and appear to be a part of the real world. I'm gonna touch on VR a little bit, but my focus is on AR and MR because I believe they have the broadest potential to impact the future. The origin of AR and VR trace back to the cinematographer Morton Halig, who created the Sensorama in 1962. The Sensorama was one of the earliest examples of immersive multi-sensory technology, and it was a motorcycle simulator, and it featured a 3D film, stereo audio, and it even simulated wind and aromas. Incredible technology for 1962. Six years later, in 1968, the father of computer graphics, Ivan Sutherland, and his student, Bob Sproul, invented the Sword of Damocles, the first virtual reality headset, or head-mounted display. And it was designed to help helicopter pilots land at night. Then, in 1990, Thomas Cottle of Boeing coined the term augmented reality when they were asked to develop a way to guide workers in the factory. And then fast forward to today, we are approaching the advent of the AR and VR era. Authors Robert Scoble and Shell Israel refer to the advent of AR and VR as the fourth transformation. The first transformation came in the 1970s when computers started running on text-based operating systems. The second came with computers operating on graphical user interfaces starting with Apple's Macintosh in 1984. And the third transformation came with mobile computing starting with the iPhone and all of the smartphones and tablets that we use today. So what can we expect from the fourth transformation? Well, imagine a world that is full of visual information right before your eyes. Walk outside your house on a Saturday afternoon. Your AR lenses are set to environmental. It shows it's 77 degrees Fahrenheit, sunset at 8.15 p.m. Then you wonder what movies are showing tonight. You set your lenses to your preferred movie app. Then you pass by a nice house for sale. You have a friend looking to move in the neighborhood, so you set your lenses to real estate. The app displays the address, the price, price per square foot. Then you realize you're hungry. You set your lenses to food. Chick-fil-A sounds good. All right, so augmented reality like this won't happen overnight. A lot of technological advances need to take place in the coming years. But the path is set and there are four areas that will for the most part develop independently that will all come together and allow AR to reach its full potential. The areas are one, hardware, two, applications, three, the internet of things, and four, 5G technology. First, let's cover the hardware. There is an explosion of AR glasses or smart glasses that are available or being released in the near future, but I'm gonna focus on the more high profile developers and products. And the AR glasses that I'm most excited about are the ones Apple is working on. On October 2017, Apple CEO Tim Cook said that the technology does not exist that would allow for the development of AR smart glasses in a quality way. He went on to say that the company would not release an AR product until it could deliver a great experience. And also said that the field of view and quality of displays of existing smart glasses are not up to what they would be satisfied releasing. In other words, when Apple finally releases an AR device, it will be incredible. Apple has been secretive about their AR and VR products, but in February 2018, the US Trademark and Patent Office published a patent application submitted by Apple with details on the smart glasses and or VR headset that they are working on. According to the patent, they are working on a multi-lens configuration that would possibly make their device lighter, less obtrusive, which would allow for a more comfortable experience. Apple is also implementing telescope technology in their device through an assembly of lenses and mirrors that bend inward or outward. 
I can't wait to find out more about what Apple is working on, and I hope they can deliver something game-changing. Now, let's talk about Microsoft's HoloLens. The HoloLens is a mixed reality headset released on March 30th, 2016 as a development edition. There is currently not a consumer version at this time. The HoloLens technology traced back to the Xbox Kinect that was introduced in 2010. You see, the technology in the Kinect that allows players to control video games with their bodies is used in the HoloLens to allow users to control holograms. What's really cool is that not only is the HoloLens self-contained, it's loaded with powerful hardware for a wearable device. It uses an Intel 32-bit CPU, 64 gigs of flash storage, 2 gigs of RAM, along with a 1 gig custom holographic processing unit specifically designed for the HoloLens. On top of that, it features an internal measurement unit, which is an assembly that contains an accelerometer, which measures the rate of change of velocity, a gyroscope, which measures orientation and angular velocity, and a magnetometer, which measures changes in magnetic fields. In other words, the HoloLens captures what you're doing and also maps the physical world around you in real time in conjunction with the aforementioned holographic processing unit. And what's exciting is that Microsoft is now developing the HoloLens 2 based on a recently published patent submitted by the company. According to the patent, the HoloLens 2 will likely have twice the field of view than the current model. It will be lighter, have a longer battery life, and an upgraded computer chip. And hopefully, this time, there will be a consumer version. And finally, Magic Leap. Magic Leap was founded in 2010 and has received investments from big companies such as Google and Alibaba, with a total of $1.4 billion raised in total. In 2017, they announced their first product, the Magic Leap One, which features the glasses called Lightwear, a controller, built-in audio in the headband, a camera so you can take videos and pictures, a microphone for voice commands, and a computing platform called Lightpack. You will be able to control various aspects of the device because Leap One has the ability to track your eyes and sense what you're looking at. You will also be able to control aspects by head posing, gestures, and voice commands as I mentioned earlier. There's also a cool feature where other people with a Magic Leap headset will be able to interact with the same digital content that you see. The company says that the Leap One will be released this year. We will have to wait and see if that actually happens. The downside is that the Leap One is designed for indoor use only with the Wi-Fi connection. In the long run, as application developers make AR more and more useful, Magic Leap will need to create a product designed for outdoor use. And this brings us to the next area, applications. AR headsets or smart glasses will not thrive if there aren't any useful applications. And the bridge to the AR era is actually smartphones. In the next 5 to 10 years, smartphones will be the proving ground for developers to lay the foundation of AR applications needed for the fourth transformation. Just about everyone has a smartphone these days, so there's a user base already in place for app developers to create for. People don't have to go out and buy something else. This is exactly why Apple and Google are creating AR platforms for mobile devices. Last year in June, Apple unveiled the Apple AR Kit. The AR Kit is a set of software development tools for developers to build augmented reality apps for iOS. It allows developers to create three-dimensional images in your world using visual inertial odometry, which harnesses your phone or tablet sensors to track the things around you and sense your device's orientation and position. Then in June of this year, Apple unveiled the AR Kit 2, which allows developers to create AR apps that multiple users can interact with the same digital content. And then similarly, Google created AR Core, which is their Android AR development kit. AR Core has three key features. First is motion tracking, to allow the phone to understand and track its position relative to the world. Second is environmental understanding, that allows the phone to detect the size and location of all types of surfaces, like the ground, a coffee table, or walls. And third is light estimation, which allows the phone to estimate the environment's current lighting conditions. AR Core was launched back in February, and Google has been working with various companies who are working on AR apps such as Sony, Porsche, among others. So it's been a year since Apple AR Kit was released, and AR Core was recently released. And there are a handful of games, but so far nothing groundbreaking is out right now. But there's one app that I want to highlight, and that's Amazon's app. You see, next to the search bar is a camera icon that will take you to the AR View feature. 
From there, you can select various products and place them around your location and see how they look in your house or your office. It's pretty cool. I think this is a step in the right direction and hopefully in the coming years, we will slowly start to see more useful AR apps for our mobile devices, slowly building a foundation of apps that will make AR headsets and smart glasses viable. But for AR apps to be truly useful, they need to be able to collect data from the physical realm. And this brings us to the third area, the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is simply the physical objects that are connected to the internet. Pretty much all of the smart items such as smart TVs, thermostats, etc. Today there are over 23 billion items connected to the internet and that figure is estimated to rise to over 75 billion by 2025. But the Internet of Things will go beyond smart objects. In the future, just about everything that is manufactured will be connected to the internet. And it's fitting that the company who wants to make this a reality is called Everything. Everything's vision is a world with trillions of products that are connected in a digital ecosystem from t-shirts to champagne, from hand cream to handbags. This is done by connecting tiny tags that communicate small bits of information through radio waves by radio frequency identification, commonly referred to as RFID or Near Field Communications or NFC. It gets more complex, but I'll just leave it at that. So, in the future, we will potentially have trillions of items connected to the internet around the world, millions of smart glasses, and many awesome and useful apps. And that means there's going to be a lot of data transferred all around us. And this is where the fourth area comes in, the 5G network. 5G stands for 5th Generation Mobile Network. The first generation was used in the 1980s and used analog protocols. The second generation was used in the 90s when networks changed to digital. And the third generation came in 2001 and was the first mobile broadband capable network. And then the fourth generation that is common today came out in 2010 and is a true mobile broadband network. And the 5G network will start coming to cities around the US as early as this year. And it will have data speeds up to 100 gigabits per second. That is around 1000 times faster than 4G speeds. That's incredible. That kind of speed is excessive for our needs today, but the network will be put into use in the future with the advent of driverless cars and hopefully help AR reach its full potential. Today, we live in the third transformation era, and it's really cool having all the information in the world at our fingertips. But I hope the fourth transformation becomes what it can potentially be, putting all the information in the world right before our eyes. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey. Hey guys, there was so much to cover on this topic, I wish I could have gone deeper on a lot of it. I really wanted to fit in Facebook's AR glasses, but the video was getting too long. So if you want me to go in depth on anything on this video, let me know and I'll gladly do so. The concept of the levels of transformations came from the book The Fourth Transformation by Robert Scoble and Shell Israel. If you want an in-depth look at the future of augmented reality, I recommend reading it. It goes into the potential of AR in vivid detail. I truly hope to see augmented reality reach its potential in the next decade or so. You know, while making this video, I was thinking how smartphones have become a normal part of everyday life. I remember buying the original iPhone in 2008. I was blown away by it for many months thereafter. When I remind myself of that moment, I appreciate the technology that we enjoy today and that sense of awe comes back a little. My point is that in the future, 
all of the cool things that I'm excited for now, most of the topics that I cover on my channel will just be the new normal in the future. <laughs> it's a neat trade-off, I guess, between the present and the future. You see, we get to be excited for the future now. And that's absolutely my favorite thing about having this channel, sharing my excitement with all of you. All right, now I'd like to thank Steven Sharmer, Max Delir, and Jose Santiago for pledging their support on Patreon. You guys are awesome. And if you connect with my content and want to help support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon page in the description. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month. Every bit helps. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you next time.